Welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about the Radius Actor Spawner. This is an actor that I created in UE4 which allows me to create and spawn actors within a certain radius of another actor. And when the actor moves out of a specific distance or radius from the spawned actor, it will then go ahead and despawn the actor we originally spawned and then respawn new actors which are now closer to our target actor. The reason I'm using this is to create actors which are actually effects near my main character. So as they are walking around, the main character can move freely and I will spawn and despawn a series of actors around them which provides ambiance and uh, in some case you could use it as spawning uh, uh, non-player character enemies, whatever you wanted really. So I wrote this in C++. I'm assuming you have a little bit of a background in that. Uh, feel free and let me know if you have any questions. I'll run through this pretty quickly. So this is my header file for our Radius Actor Spawner. I create a uh, structure which is called a spawn instruction. It has an array of class types for the actor. So we will randomly choose one of these actors to spawn. It also has a array of the actors that were actually spawned. A total number of actors that we would like to have spawned. The radius that we should spawn the actor within. So this is like the distance away from the target. Um, the next one is the radius at which we'll destroy any actors we've spawned. So as we move away from them. The main class is a radius spawn actor. They're a radius actor spawner. Uh, it's based off of a, a actor class. Let's see, we have a spawn function. Uh, the standard tick function. We have two properties which are a T array of spawn instructions. So this is where we will configure the actor and we have an array of, or sorry, not an array in this case. This is a subclass of an actor. So this will be the target actor that we're spawning other actors around. Private variables, we have a timer handle, uh, a pointer to our target, and spawn actor. Oh, this is our internal function to spawn the actor. Okay. So now that you've seen that, we'll go on to the implementation. I'll scroll up to the top here. Uh, we include our header file. Here's the constructor. We essentially right here is where we control uh, the tick. So we're allowed to tick in this actor and we are saying we want to tick every 10 seconds. So this means the tick function will get called every 10 seconds, roughly, right? So we don't want this calling 30 times a second. We want it to call every 10 seconds. You can adjust this to be however accurate you want it. I didn't need it terribly accurate, so I just said 10 seconds. All right, uh, we have the begin play. This is all standard stuff. We have an on spawn uh, that I'm, it looks like I'm not even using that. So that would be something I can just get rid of. There's no need to even have that in here. Uh, the last part is our tick function. So we call the super tick. So this is calling the parent class. Here I have an array of deletes and I'll show you why I need that in a minute. So what we do is we iterate through our spawn instructions. If we have any spawned actors, we will clean them up. And so we're going through a list of all of the actors that we have spawned. We are grabbing the, the instance for that actor right here. 
we're checking the distance from our current location of the target actor to the current location of the actor that we spawned. So get world, get first person. So in my case, the target actor, I'm using the first person player controller's pawn. Therefore, I don't need to set a target. I'm just using the first person player controller's pawn. In this case, I'm writing a first person game. I'll only ever have one person, so it's easy enough for me to do that. If the distance from that actor is greater than the destroy radius, I mark the actor to get destroyed by adding it to my delete array that I created up here, and then I go ahead and destroy it. I log it, and we go through all of our spawned actors. Now I walk through all of my deletes, and I remove them from the spawned actor array. So that's just kind of basic. You don't want to delete from an array that you're walking through. So I do it in two steps there. And in the last part, I look at my instruction. I look at the spawned actors. And if the number of spawned actors is less than the total number that the it is configured to spawn, then I go ahead and spawn an actor. So this will only spawn one actor. The next time tick calls, another one will get created. And that's, that's how this works. Finally, we'll look at the spawn actor function. Spawn actor right here. Uh, we call it with the spawn instruction. We, if there are actors configured, and if the configured class for the actor is not null, then we'll go ahead, get the origin of our current player controller. Yep. We'll set an actor rotation. Oh, in this case, I'm actually spawning it right on top of the actor rather than in a radius around them. That would be easy enough to fix. Uh, zero rotating. So I create a rotator, the spawn parameters, and I go ahead and spawn the actor. I get the index of it, and... I add, oh yeah, I go ahead and add it to my spawned actor list. So in this case, I'm actually spawning it right on top of our target actor. You would need to do some calculation to find the uh, a, an origin around the target actor, uh, around the radius of him, to figure out where you want to do that. Uh, so let's look at this in, in practice. Go ahead and start this. Okay, so now that we've created our radius actor spawner, we drag it into our scene, and then we're going to configure the, the actor spawner to spawn the actor that we want. So in this case, you have, I'll just go through it right here. So I'll delete all these. So when you first come in under radius actor spawner, you have no spawn instructions. So you add one of these new items right here. Then you're going to choose the actor that you would like to spawn. So I'm going to add this in. And here is where you choose the class of actor that you want to spawn. In my case, I'm going to pick this Firefly actor. So choose that. If you added more than one, it would randomly spawn in one of the items that was chosen. Spawn actors we're not going to mess with because this gets managed at runtime. Uh, the number of items I want to spawn is one. The We'll say the spawn radius is uh, 1000 and we'll say that the radius that it will get destroyed if we get outside of this distance will be 2000. Lastly would be the target origin class. In this case, I'm not specifying a specific class or, or class type. I'm just using, uh, in the code we saw that I'm just using the first person player controller to determine the location that I'm going to spawn my, my new actor. In my case, I'm using a first person game, so it doesn't matter but it would be very easy to extend this.
to do so. So now that we have our actor spawner configured, it will follow these instructions. And this way you can drag this into any project and use it for a variety of features, uh, such as spawning, you know, ambient actors or enemies, wh whatever you would like. So it's, it's your choice. Okay, that's all. Moving on to the uh, demonstration. Okay, so here we are. Now I'm going to show you that as my character walks around, it is going to spawn a firefly uh, particle system. And the particle system, in this case, you'll see some fireflies pop up here. But it is random, there's one right there. It is randomly generating, here's another one down here. It is generating a particle within a radius of a cylinder. There's another one right there, there's another one right there. Now over here you'll see this is the actor that was created. So now as I move through the environment, it is going to destroy that actor. So I come up here and once my tick function comes by, it deleted the actor and it should spawn another actor which is now closer to where I'm at. So shortly here we should see another um, firefly there's one right there. Right. So now I've deleted the one actor and recreated it. Now I guess technically I could have moved the actor. Uh, that may have been more efficient. Um, I think you could eat. Here's another firefly down here. So this is the radius all around him and the actor is getting spawned right here. You could easily adopt this to move the actors around just by moving their location and maybe I would go ahead and do that. There may be some options where you would want to destroy and respawn them. Uh, you may also want to have multiple actors in place so it really depends how you want to do it. I'm not an expert but this is working for my my use case and so I'm I'm pretty happy with it so far. So now we'll go ahead and uh, try it again. So I'll move move my guy over here so he should be really far away and if I stand here for a minute yep sure enough there's my uh, my firefly showed up so that was good there's another one right there so yeah so everything's working good anyway I hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions let me know and please subscribe if you enjoy these types of tutorials. Thanks!